Mercedes-Benz EQ range is growing. The EQ Power plug-in hybrids have joined the compact car family. Now we'll soon have plug-in hybrid variants of the new GLA, B-Class and the CLA both in coupe and shooting brake form, but here we've already got our first look at the electrified family. It is the A250e. A plug-in hybrid brings together the best of two worlds. Here we have the ability to do up to 44 miles of zero local emissions driving, but you also get the even longer range capability and flexibility of the petrol engine. Combine these two together and you have a powerful and engaging driving experience, but also allowing you to maximise your fuel economy and get up to 256 miles to the gallon. Under the bonnet is the 1.3 litre turbocharged four-cylinder engine. This delivers 158 brake horsepower on its own and has got some really clever fuel saving technologies built into it. So it has cylinder deactivation, under low loads it can switch off cylinders number two and three, run as a two cylinder engine and save some fuel. The engine is so compact that you can fit it onto an A3 piece of paper with some room to spare and even bolting on the gearbox doesn't take up that much more room either. Now the hybrid part of the A250e is made up of the 10.6 kilowatt hour battery which is mounted in the boot of the car. This can transmit 100 brake horsepower through the 8-speed twin clutch gearbox too. Combine the electric power and the petrol power together and you've got a combined system output of about 212 horsepower. Now I mentioned that the battery is mounted in the boot of the car, but don't worry. The way that this car has been engineered really cleverly minimises the amount of boot space that would usually be lost. It is honestly only about that much. Now the key thing with this car is the zero emissions driving range. With a maximum range of up to 44 miles, it should be able to do most commutes on electric power alone. Think about it. How many miles do you really do in a day? According to research done by Mercedes-Benz, 90% of all journeys are under 31 miles. 95% of all journeys are under 62 miles. And 99% of journeys are under 248 miles. My commute to work is 27 miles on the road. So I'd be able to do my commute on electric power alone, charge it up at work, and drive home again on electric only power, and then charge it again overnight, just as you would do uh, with your phone, for example, make sure it's all ready for the morning. Having one of these would reduce my fuel costs on my commute by 100%. But there are lots of questions that come around with alternate fuel cars like plug-in hybrids. So let's answer some of these questions for you. Yes. Every hybrid charges itself, either using the engine or regenerative braking. One of the ideas behind a plug-in hybrid is to allow you to do longer distances on electric power alone. As an example, you might drive through the centre of London using just the battery, but use the petrol engine to help you along the M25 and the M11 or the A1M as you're heading back towards Hertfordshire. The more time you spend driving on the battery, the less time you spend using petrol. Think of it that way. To gain maximum electric only driving range or to extract the most efficiency out of the car, plug in the battery and let it charge. Most cars actually spend about 80% of their entire lifetime sitting around doing nothing. So why not use this time when the car is parked to top up the battery as an example. Using a wall box like we have here, the battery can be charged in as little as three and a half hours and this is a much more efficient way of charging the battery than just charging it off the engine alone. There's now over 30,000 places to charge an electric or plug-in hybrid car in the UK. Now this is up from 20,000 just over a year ago. That's also more places to charge a plug-in hybrid or electric car than there are places to buy fossil fuels. Paying for these charges is simple too. Thanks to Mercedes Me Charge, all of the electricity that you buy in one month will come out in one bill. At many charging stations, the car and MBUX can actually communicate with it, sorting out the electricity that you're using and billing all for you. When you sign up for Mercedes Me Charge, you'll also get a contactless card, which at certain charging stations you'll need to tap on and tap off when you start and finish charging, much like using an Oyster card on the underground. Yes. You can charge the car either using a three pin socket or by using a wall box similar to the one that we have here. Now in the UK, we've teamed up with BP Chargemaster who will take care of your home charge solution for you. If your property is suitable, 
then you can get the home charge system installed for £499. This includes a grant from the government, the VAT and the installation. Now thanks to Mercedes Me, you can also set when you would like your car to start charging. So you can get home in the evening, plug the car in at the wall, but you can tell the car not to start accepting charge until, say, midnight when electricity gets a little bit cheaper. Now, by our calculations, a full charge on the A250e will only cost about £2.46. This works out at a cost of 6.6 .6 pence per mile. My own car costs 16 pence a mile to run. So you can have 44 miles of electric only driving range for less than the cost of a meal deal. Yes, it does. All zero emission capable cars must make some sort of noise when travelling at low speeds. It's quite subtle, but you will hear it. All Mercedes-Benz EQ and EQ power plug-in hybrids make their own specific noise at speeds of up to 20 km an hour or about 17 miles per hour. Above this speed it switches off because that's when the sound of the tyres and the road noise will start to take over. But just think about it next time you're walking. What do you hear first when a car's coming towards you? Is it the sound of the engine or is it the sound of the wind and the sound of the tyres? Now the car also makes a noise when it is reversing as well. Generally you will be reversing on the battery power alone. The acoustic warning is a nice subtle beeping just to make sure that people who may be standing behind you can hear that something's coming. Well, I'll admit, the first time that I drove a electric car, um, and the first time I drove a hybrid actually, I thought it would be as different as travelling 20 miles a day on a donkey as uh, flying 11 hours to San Francisco. It's completely different. But I couldn't have been more wrong. The way the the car drives, okay yes it's got a completely different way of powering itself, but the way that the car drives is familiar. To be honest it drives like a car, it drives like an A-Class. Yes there's different uh, regeneration modes that you can uh, program in, but other than that it feels normal. And to say that it drives like a regular A-Class is actually a massive compliment. Because the A-Class for me is one of the easiest to drive, but also one of the most rewarding hatchbacks on the market today. I love the way that the A-Class handles. So the car will always start on its battery, it will always start in electric only mode, and the petrol engine will come in as and when you need it. When the petrol engine comes into play all depends on how you use the accelerator. So at the moment we are in Hazel End, and I'm not using uh, much throttle at all, so the car is happily going along just using electric power. If you need to get up to speed uh, quickly, if you're joining the motorway and uh, you uh, put your foot down, then both the petrol engine and the electric motor will work together, give you that maximum system output, 215 horsepower to get you up to speed quickly. The acceleration in this car is stonking, it's a lot of power and it's a lot of torque in quite a small car still. And the torque from the electric motor is available at zero RPM, peak torque. Now it will feel a little bit strange for the first few minutes, maybe the first couple of miles. We're driving along, enjoying the uh, nice countryside of Essex and Hertfordshire, and it's so quiet in here that I can almost hear my own hair growing, it is brilliant. But once you've got over the initial sensory overload, or lack thereof, from there being no noise, Pop the radio on, listen to some soothing drum and bass, and you'll soon forget what it is that's powering you. You won't be able to tell whether it's the petrol engine kicking in, or just as it is at the moment, the electric motor doing all the work. There's a few different driving modes that you can pick with the dynamic select switch down in the centre of the cabin. The car will always start in comfort mode, which is a relaxing, engaging, but economical drive. Move it down a switch, and we go into electric does what it says on the tin, electric only driving mode. But within this mode, this is where you can configure your regenerative braking settings. Now, whilst we're here, let's talk a little bit about regenerative braking, or regen as you will hear it being called quite a lot. Regen is simply, when you lift off the accelerator, the car will start to slow down. You'll feel it's almost like a bit of engine braking. As it's doing this, it will harvest energy and put it back into the battery, much the same 
as what the racing cars in Formula E, Formula One, and the hybrids in the World Endurance Championship do. Now you can choose what level of regen you would like with the paddles on the steering wheel. It will default into D Auto, which is great because that's by far my favorite of the driving modes on our EQ models. It's the most like driving a car naturally. Well, yes. I'm a big fan of the A-Class, this generation in particular, for a number of reasons. For one, just take a look at the interior, class leader. Another reason, I love the technology. This is right at the cutting edge of what is possible in the automotive industry for in-car and drivetrain technology, and I think it's brilliant. And I like how all of this technology works so seamlessly. It's all happening in the background. This car is doing loads and loads of clever things without you even realising it. It's almost imperceivable the way that this car slips into electric only mode and then boots up the combustion engine when it needs it. And the car barely shouts about it when it does that. And that's another thing I like, the subtlety of it. Save for the two fuel fillers, the two badges on the flanks and one small E on the boot, you wouldn't know that this car is actually a plug-in hybrid. And I like that. It doesn't need to shout about it. Prices start at £32,890 for an A250e AMG line hatchback and £33,575 for the A250e saloon in AMG line trim as well. That's almost identically priced to the A220d. Hybrids are affordable. And by intelligently using all of the systems that you've got at your disposal, particularly if you can do most of your driving in this car on electric only, the potential fuel costs compared to a regular internal combustion engine car are staggering. Plug-in hybrids are a key step on the way to zero emissions driving. And a key pillar for Mercedes-Benz's ambition to become a carbon neutral company by 2039. And if this is what the technology of the future looks like and drives like, then I like it. I like it a lot. Thank you.